بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أخوة الإسلام عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يكذبه ولا يحقره التقوى هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب امرئ من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه InshaAllah, today we will go over Hadith number 35 of al And since we have the board here, yeah, I guess I may write the Hadith for you here. Hopefully, inshaAllah, like in the future, if we have like a portable board, we could have it here in the middle. But, uh, but maybe, maybe I'll rely on your retentive ability. Uh, so this hadith is reported by Imam Muslim rahimahullah, from Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu and, and it is reported by, by others as well it is reported by Bukhari, it is reported by Tirmidhi it is reported by Ahmad from Masir ibn al-Asqa it is reported by Tirmidhi from Abi Hurairah it is reported also from Abi Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu in Muslim Imam Ahmad it is reported from Anas uh, by Bukhari and Muslim it is reported from uh, other companions as well. So Alas reported it, Abu Bakr reported it, Abu Raya reported it, Ibn Umar reported it, uh, many uh, Sahaba reported the Hadith. And that tells you what? That a lot of Sahaba felt that the Hadith is uh, worthy of uh, reporting. Certainly everything from the Prophet is worthy, but uh, when you have like a lot of Sahaba reporting a particular hadith, it means that they have a particular interest in this hadith and they really, really wanted to report it and they really not wanted to spread knowledge of this uh, hadith. Particularly when you have people like Abu Bakr and Omar reporting a hadith, uh, they don't report a lot, they don't report frequently. So when there is a hadith reported by Abu Bakr and Omar, you, you need to be pay attention uh, because they must be reporting something that Abu Bakr and Omar felt is important to, to re, uh, relate to us. And uh, the, the wording of the hadith, why did Imam Nawawi choose the uh, report that is only by Muslim and not by Bukhari? Because like I said, this hadith has been also reported by Bukhari, different wordings have been reported by Bukhari. Sometimes a certain wording, a certain phrasing would be more, most comprehensive, so that, that's why if you want to, to, to use a particular uh, report, you, you would want to use the most comprehensive. The most comprehensive happened to be reported by Muslim only and uh, not al Bukhari of this particular hadith. And it's, it's a hadith about how we treat each other. It is a hadith about, you know, uh, interactions and mu'amala. Uh, the, the, they say deen and mu'amala. Deen is about, you know, how we treat others. Uh, this, this is not particularly a hadith, it's a statement, and uh, it is not an absolutist statement. Uh, you usually, you know, uh, absolute statements are very, very rare to come by. So these are relative statements, meaning what? Meaning that you don't understand, that you don't take it in the absolute form. Because if you take it in the absolute form and you, you say, a deen and Muhammad, a deen is about how we treat others, then a deen is not about praying, right? <laughs> deen is not about fasting, deen is not about hajj. Well, deen is about all of this, and it is also about how we treat others, but a statement like this would basically emphasize the importance of how we are treating others, because it is a manifestation of your true, uh, uh, it's a manifestation of your true faith, it's a manifestation of the beauty of your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith, in this hadith, the Prophet said, لا تحاسدوا 
لا تحاسبوا Don't envy one another. ولا تناجسوا And don't inflate prices on one another. ولا تباغضوا And don't hate one another. ولا تدابروا And do not turn away from one another. So لا تحاسبوا ولا تناجسوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا Don't envy one another. Don't inflate prices on one another. Do not hate one another. And do not turn away from one another. ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض which means what and do not undercut one another in sales do not undercut one another in sales المسلم وكن عباد الله إخوانا and be O servants of Allah brothers المسلم وأخو المسلم المسلم is the brother of his fellow Muslim لا يظلمه لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يكذبه ولا يحقره. That's actually the right. So لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا. ولا تدابروا. So hasad is envy. Do not envy one another. تناجشوا inflate prices and we will come to the explanation of this. ولا تباغضوا hate. ولا تدابروا turn away or turn your back to your brother. ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض. Do not outsell and do or do not undercut. Do not undercut one another in sales. And we will explain what it means. وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا. وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا. Kuno means what? Be ibad servants of Allah, ikhwan of brothers. Be O servants of Allah, brothers. Be brothers. Al-Muslim wa akhul Muslim. Al-Muslim wa akhul Muslim. The Muslim. Is the brother of his fellow Muslim? لا يظلمه ولا يخذله. He does not does not oppress him, and he does not fail him or let him down. يخذله يستيلهم أو يقولهم داو ولا يكذبه ولا يحقره يكذبه يدرس ما يتنهر يحقره he does not despise him or hold him in contempt التقوى ها هنا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم سأل التقوى ها هنا and he pointed to his chest three times تقوى ها هنا which means piety is right here بحسب المرء من الاسم أن يحفر رفاه المسلم حسب المرء حسب means enough مرء the the person من الاسم enough evil من الاسم evil or sin من الاسم أن يحترى to despise أخاه المسلم his Muslim brother enough evil to despise كل 
المسلم على المسلم حرام كل المسلم على المسلم حرام كل means what means all entirety all the whole of a Muslim entirety of a Muslim all of the Muslim على المسلم for the Muslim or to the Muslim is fellow Muslim حرام means inviolable so the entirety of a Muslim to the Muslim or for the Muslim is inviolable inviolable and then the Prophet Muhammad explained what he meant by good and he said دَمُهُ وَمَالُهُ you could tell I have something to do with uh, medicine right from my hand right وَعَرْضُ <laughs> His blood, his property, and his honor. Blood, property, and honor. Okay. So this hadith is referred to the moon. And that must be from the moon. But from Allah, Allah. Similar reports came from Ibn Umar and from Anas and from Wakil ibn al and from uh, Abi Bakr. And in fact, I just noticed now that you probably can't read this. Okay, yeah. We bring this here in case I needed to use it. Well, I'm really sorry for wasting your time, but, but if those of you who have short vision, if you could uh, see this, uh, it would be good. Now, before we begin, someone may say, all of this hadith is about the Muslim and his fellow Muslim and his brother and so on and so forth, which does not mean that for a non-Muslim, uh, none of this applies. Applies or doesn't apply? Okay. So, so there is an area, there, there is an area where it certainly applies, an area where it certainly does not apply, and an area which is controversial. Where is the area that it certainly applies according to all of the scholars by agreement, consensus. Okay, so, so but in general, it, it, justice is applicable to the Muslim and non-Muslim. The government is forbidden, whether it's against the Muslim or non-Muslim. And that's of the, by, that's by agreement, right? This area is by agreement. The area where it doesn't apply it are the extra rights that the Muslim enjoys, enjoys over his fellow Muslim. There are extra rights. And, 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 and this should not be a problem. And we should not shy away from this. There, there has to be some fraternity for the believers, that, that is distinct fraternity for the believers. Uh, people have extra rights over others on, on various grounds. People have extra rights over others. Human beings have no people to have more rights based on certain allegiances. Those allegiances are sometimes tribal, sometimes racial, sometimes uh, national. You know, national allegiance is not so much much different from tribal allegiance, by the way. You know, it may sound nicer. It may sound more civilized because it's national. It's your compatriots. It is your countrymen. It sounds more, uh, it, 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 it just only sounds uh, more civilized, but it is really not much different from tribal allegiance. It, it is not much different. Because the relationship here is a coincidental relationship. You know, it's, it's not about principles, it's not about ethics, it's not about anything. It's not about people that just happen to be born in the same country where you were born. Or people that happen to live in the same place where you live. 
regardless of the principles, of the ethics, the, 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 you know, whether you're good or bad, the evil or, you know, kind. Uh, uh, so it is not much different from kind of allegiance. So when we say that the, the common denominator between Muslims, the common denominator, the allegiance that connects all the Muslims, is their commitment to the faith, the commitment to the Lord who creates them, the commitment to their religion. Uh, how is this, how should this be found upon? Uh, how is this not superior to national allegiance? It is certainly superior to national allegiance. This is an allegiance by choice. It is an allegiance by informed choice. It is an allegiance by informed, ethical, principled, non-pragmatic choice. It is not in, uh, you know, an allegiance by coincidence. It is not an allegiance by you know, zeal for, for one's tribe or one's nation or one's race, which are all manifestations of egotism, zeal for oneself, right? Because your family is, is the closest circle around you, then your clan, then your tribe, then your, your nation. So it's all about you. It is all about you. But when you have allegiance that is based on uh, the religion that this is an informed, ethical, principled uh, allegiance, and it should not be found upon at all. So there are extra rights that a Muslim enjoys over his fellow Muslim. So this has to be known. The area in the middle is basically whether you could uh, uh, undercut a non-Muslim in faith. Could you undercut a Muslim? What, what, do you mean, what, what do I what we mean by undercutting a non-Muslim? So I am sending a product to you. I'm sending a product to you, and we're, we're, we're discussing it. And then we agreed that, OK, I will give it to you for this much money. You want to get your money, you, 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 the, for, for some reason, there is a delay between this agreement and the finalization of the state. Then I come into the picture, I come into the picture. You, are, you have agreed on the price. I come into the picture and say, I'll, I'll give you a better price for this product. You cannot do this to a Muslim. You cannot do this to a Muslim. Okay? Now, can you do it to a non-Muslim? Here is what it, here is what it is controversial. So, you know, the guy, you know, said yes. And the rest of the Imam said no. Uh, that these uh, say, you know, uh, interactions or transactions, the ethics of transactions will apply to Muslims and non-Muslims. You can't even undercut a, a, a non-Muslim. So basically, we're talking about the majority of Muslims saying that you cannot even do this to a non-Muslim. All of them say you cannot do injustice to a non-Muslim. You cannot deceive, you cannot cheat a non-Muslim. Certainly, you know, uh, the state of war is a completely different story. The conditions of war are completely different. And what happens during war is a completely different set of rules and set. But we're, we're talking about peaceful non-Muslims. We're talking about non-Muslims that are uh, that, that live with, with us in peace or have uh, peace with us. Or we live with them in peace. <laughs> like, like our conditions. We live with them in peace, they live with us in peace. Uh, but peaceful non-Muslims is, is what we're talking about. So the majority of the Muslim scholars said that this is applicable also to non-Muslims. So everything in this hadith will be applicable uh, to non-Muslim except when it is an extra, you know. Uh, and the reason why the Prophet said the Muslim, and he said in, in the other reports, like, you know, I wouldn't have to put that in the people that said, not as good becomes a believer and said he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. The scholars said the reason why the Prophet said the Muslim, the reason why he said your brother or his brother, is to underscore the ugliness of uh, betrayal. Because he's saying your brother, your fellow Muslim. It is to, to, to basically highlight the ugliness. Uh, of your, your uh, of, of those uh, low ethics, uh, but it does not mean that you can 
that is something that you should wait for yourself. In fact, it is reported by Bukhari Muslim from Abdullah bin Mas'ud that the Prophet said, La hasada illa fitnatayi. There is no hasad that is legitimate, that is praiseworthy, envy that is praiseworthy. Here it does not mean envy in the negative sense, uh, but it means wishing to have what your brother has, what others have, except regarding two matters. A man with whom Allah, 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 with whom Allah blessed with, uh, or whom Allah blessed with uh, money or wealth, and he spends of it day and night. He spends of it day and night. He spends of it in the path, in the same path of Allah. He said, He is spending of his money uh, like uh, a huge wealth. And he keeps spending on his uh, wealth. You know, Hakim Al-Ola Jones, the basketball player, if you go to Texas, you go to the IDC, the Islamic Dow Center at Texas, it, it is a huge building. It was like a huge uh, historical bank in the middle of uh, downtown uh, uh, Houston. Uh, and, and then he, he bought it and he, you know, I mean, it's a masjid. I, isn't this something that is enviable? Like you wish that you have the money that he has so that you could do what, what he did. It's like, it's so beautiful. But he, just like one man, it's like a one man show. You see how much, how much he suffered to build a masjid anywhere and like, you know, and different drives and different tactics and, you know, you know, reach the Tarawi and stuff like that. Anyway, but this man, he, he actually came to a, like a huge historical, uh, well-built uh, band in the middle of downtown Houston, in the middle of downtown Houston, a very, very desirable uh, spot, and he just bought it and he gave it to Muslims to them. You, 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 you say to yourself, you know, I wish I had this money to do what, what you did. That is absolutely fine. The Prophet said that this is a commendable form of envy, a commendable form of hazard. A man to whom Allah gave money or wealth, and he spends all it day and night. So I have a lady when a man that Allah has blessed with the Quran. So he helps to memorize the Quran. So he is trying to change the Quran day and night. And it does not mean, in Yakova, in inverted knowledge, it does not only mean recitation, but it also means acting upon it. It means living by it. It, it is. Qurra al Sahaba, the recitals of Sahaba, named to the Alamah of Sahaba, the scholars of Sahaba. So it is uh, something that uh, is desirable. So, look, it happened uh, in, in religious matters, in religious matters, keep in mind that in religious matters, you would never, uh, unless you're completely perverted, right? you have like your, 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 your house, like a problem up here. You would never wish to have it uh, move, you know, to, to, to take it away from your brother, right? Why? Because Tabulahi Wasa, you know, Allah's virtue, Allah's bounty is boundless, is infinite. Resources in this world are finite, so we always feel the competitiveness about resources in this world. So the money has to be with you or me, you know. But when it comes to the talk of Allah, when it comes to the blessings of Allah, when it comes to the Quran, you know, the Quran, the talk of Allah works out, it's infinite. So you could, you could have it, and we could keep it. And therefore, it is not necessarily a that is negative. I want it. I want, I want to have it. Take it from him. Yes. Wouldn't one want to desire to be in a higher station or the highest station of the Prophet? And then that would make his brother in a lower station, perhaps, if he desires it? Or with himself, Allah, and Allah, and Allah, and Allah? 
Yeah, but, but, but it's not really, what, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase your rankings, you're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put you on top of someone in particular, but you just ask Allah to generally uh, raise your rankings. And don't worry, you're not getting any other than <laughs> You're not going to compete with the Prophet. With people is subject to this great sin. And do not hate one another. And, and we will not talk much about not hating one another because it is, uh, it is obvious. Uh, means what? Do not turn away from one another. Do not give your back. Dubur is the back. So it is the rear end. So giving your back to your brother means do not shun, do not boycott, do not cut off. Your brother, do not give your back to your brother, turn away, turn your back, all of this. Uh, Al-Hajr, Al-Hajr. Dawood reported from Abi Khiraj, radiallahu anhu, he, that the Prophet said, Man hajara akhahu sanatan fahuwa kasafki dami. He who cuts off his brother for a year, it is like killing him. In sin, it is like killing him. Manhajara, and this hadith is authentic. It is authenticated by you know uh, the, the majority of scholars of hadith. The, 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 they authenticated this report. Manhajara, he who cuts off his brother for a year is like killing him. And the Prophet said that you can't cut off your brother for half for, for more than yes. For, Yes, the Bukhari and Muslim reported from Abi Ayyub that the Prophet said uh, that it is not permissible to, uh, cut, to boycott or cut off or shun your brother for more than three days. When they meet, one get, each one of them gives his back to his uh, brother, and the best of them is the one who starts with the greeting of Salam, is the one who gives Salam first. I'll come to it. Maybe I'll come to it. Uh, whatever you're asking. So now, so this is uh, Hajj. Does the saying of Salam, giving of Salam, is the saying or giving of Salam enough to end the state of Hajj? So that we say, okay, I, I gave him Salam, so I'm done. Some of the scholars said that it is, as like an initial step, it is, it ends the state of Hajj, or the state of uh, shining your brother. Uh, but many of the scholars said that it is it, it, it is resumption of what used to be between you. So if this is one of your relatives, for instance, one from your kin, then it will not be enough to just give them salam. It is the resumption of what we used to have, the relationship that we used to have, that is the end of the state of hatred or boycotting your brother. It is to resume what you used to have before. Certainly, it is important that we all know, as the Prophet said, أحبب من أحببت هون المال Moderation of feelings, because sometimes we're too involved with each other. Sometimes when we like each other, we get a little bit too involved, too much on the, like, you know, suffocate one another with that love. So, that the Prophet said, زورجت بن تزدد حب and visit infrequently that you may increase in, in love. Uh, the Prophet said, Love those whom you love in moderation. So uh, sometimes we're excessive also in our love. Our emotions are a little bit volatile, too hot, too cold. And, too, and, and people who have hot emotions, they also have extreme negative emotions. People who, who, have, who have excessiveness in their positive emotions, they have excessiveness in their negative emotions. So what the Prophet is saying in this hadith, be moderate in both emotions. Love those that you love with moderation. You, he may be your foe one day. And hate those that you hate with moderation. They may be your loved ones one day. So when, if, if, if our relationship used to be excessive, we were excessively involved with each other, then we, we sort of uh, cool it down a little bit. Resumption does not mean you go back to 
you know, that excessiveness that caused you the problem in the first place. Because excessiveness and love can cause problems, you know, to when you're, you don't give the people their personal space and, and so on. Okay, so the final thing that I wanted to say about this is that this is, this is not applicable to boycotting others for the sake of Allah, such as when the Prophet saw this is what you wanted to ask about. Okay. I know the guys have been asking me in these questions. I can predict your questions. Uh, so when you boycott someone for the sake of Allah, it's, this is not applicable to boycotting someone for the sake of Allah. Because the Prophet boycotted Ka'ab ibn Malik and another ibn Umayyah, but the, people, the three people that stayed behind the Ghazwa Shabuk and did not go out with the Prophet for how many days? 50 days, 5-0. Uh, the, the Prophet and the companions, no one talked to them for 50 days. So to boycott someone for the sake of Allah is different from this. But, you know, the, the, you know, you really need to be clear on your intentions. You need to be uh, clear on uh, the, the correctness of your action. Because, you know, Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi al at the end of the day, which is joining and joining the good and forbidding the bad, is for the ultimate purpose of what? Increasing the good and limiting, you know, uh, the bad. Or the evil, and if your tactics uh, are, are not going to work, then you should not do it. You, you should, you know, uh, and if it is, it's not only about boycotting, because or showing your Muslim brother. Sometimes also, when we are in a community like this, Muslims are a minority, and the, the very very few in the middle, midst of uh, a very, very large uh, non-Muslim population, then you're running the, the risk of losing them by boycotting them. So sometimes, like in a Muslim country, where you boycott, like some fellow, for instance, who sells uh, some haram, you know, who sells liquor, for instance, and everybody boycotts him in, in, in the neighborhood, it is likely that this will be a deterrence for them. And then they come to the masjid and they want to donate to the masjid and the masjid tells them, no, we'll not take your money because it's, your money comes from Haram. It is likely that this will be a deterrence for them. Now, if it, does not, if it is not a deterrence, then you don't do it. If it will push them a further away, then you do not do it. Right or wrong? Because the, 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 main, the main principle of Amr al-Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar is to limit the Munkar and to increase the Ma'ruf, increase that which is good and limit that which is bad. If the, your technique is proving to, to do the opposite, then you change your technique because that is the main purpose of Amr al-Ma'ruf and Nahi al-Munkar. Which means do not undercut one another and say. Now, when does it accepted 
But in auctions, it is clear that the seller had not accepted until he gets the final price. So the auctions are not haram. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he sold something in the auction. So it, auctions are not per se haram. But when, when I, and you're saying, why is this haram? When, when we agree and then you come in the middle and you, you offer more, it is haram because it will hurt my feelings. Because I, I became, you know, expectant of having this property. You know, it's a piece of furniture. I like, I reached an agreement with the seller. And then you came and you took it away from me. You offered more money and you took it away from me. How could, how could that not hurt my feelings? And this is all about not hurting feelings. This hadith is all about not hurting feelings. That is why, because, because you see, you said this because it does not seem to be injustice. That is why some of the scholars said you could do this to an al-Muslim. Because it is not injustice. So to come in, you know, after we have agreed, but the, the sale is not finalized. I did not pay the price, but we have agreed to come in and take that, you know, uh, item from me, merchandise from me. It hurts my feeling, but it is not injustice to me. So that is why the scholars said, some of the, some of the scholars said you could do it with non-Muslims. The majority said you still should not do it, even with non-Muslims, because it hurts people's feelings. Hmm? There's an expect for the road then, you know. He came to an agreement. It's just it gets delayed. The transaction got delayed. But with the word of change of words, the deal was, you know, finalized. No, so the, no, 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 the deal is still not finalized. But there is apparent acceptance from both parties. But the deal is not finalized. The deal would be finalized when you, when you say, okay, it's yours. I still did not get the money. But we're not talking about when the seller says it's yours, the buyer says, I, would, I take it. Ijab al kabul offer and acceptance. We're not talking about, this has not happened yet. We're talking about an agreement in the sense of acceptance. You know, I want to buy this item from you for $2. Okay, you know. Uh, all right, two dollars is okay. You know, I said bought it for you know a dollar and ninety cents, and but I I didn't say take take it. I did not offer it. You did not accept it. The sale is not verbally finalized, and the price has not been made. But there are signs of acceptance. There are signs of acceptance, and that is where I interfere in the sale and take it for myself. This is not halal. Now, in auctions, it is understood by customs, by the of people or the customs of people, that it is not final until it is final, until the, the person, uh, auctioneer, declares that, that it is final. So I, I could still uh, uh, go to auctions and do this. So what I have about to about, we are we're done with this. And be all the uh, servants of Allah, ikhwanan, meaning uh, brothers. How do you be ibad Allah, ikhwanan? How do you be ibad Allah, ikhwanan? The Muslim of Bazaar, the Hadith Anas, the Prophet said, Tahadaw, Tahabu, or Tahadaw, fa inna al Hadiyata, to zeal us Sahimata. Uh, you know, exchange gifts that you may uh, have love for one another. Exchange gifts because gifts remove uh, hatred from the hearts, remove resentment, sakhima, resentment from the hearts. The Prophet said, Wallahi la tu'minu hatta tahab, ala adulukum ala shayin in fa'atumu wa tahabaptum, nafshu salama baynakum. By Allah, you will not. Wallahi la la tukhulu jannat hatta tu'minu By Allah you will not enter paradise until you have faith And you will not have faith until you love one another And should I not tell you of something that will make you love one another That will bring about love between you And he said Afshu salama bainakum Spread the greeting of salam uh, among you 
So there, كونوا عباد الله إخوانا be brothers. This is a command for us to be brothers, to have brotherly feelings and to act like brothers. But you can't, you know, it means that you have to basically pursue all the means that will make us brothers. So the command is not to become brothers, because becoming brothers is beyond our capacity. If you spend all of the treasures of this earth, you will not be able to reconcile between hearts. But Allah can reconcile between other hearts. But the command here, what is obligatory, is not to become brothers, because it's beyond our capacity. It is basically to pursue the means that will make us brothers. Pursue all the means that will make us brothers. And Muslim, and Muslim, and Muslim is the brother of his fellow Muslim. Uh, and, and this is this is clear. He does not oppress him. He does not let him down. Uh, so he does not oppress him, he does not put him down, he does not lie to him, he does not despise him. Taqwa is here, and he pointed this just three times. It's enough evil for a man to despise his fellow Muslim or his Muslim brother. Uh, the entirety is, of a Muslim is inviolable, inviolable to his uh, Muslim brother, his blood, his property, and his honor. What time do you have to say? Huh? Uh, okay, so I think we should we should just uh, defer the, the rest of it until next time because it will take a little too long. Uh, but anyway, the Muslim is the brother of his fellow Muslim. He does not oppress him. We'll talk about oppressing. We'll talk about not letting him down, not failing him. In some reports, in some hadith, he does not give him give him in meaning he does not give him in to his enemy. And in some reports, he does not deceive him. He does not lie to him, he does not despise him or hold him in contempt. Taqwa ha'muna, piety is right here. Uh, it is enough evil for a man to despise his fellow Muslim. What does it mean, enough evil? It means that it is enough to destroy him. Uh, to despise his fellow Muslim. All of the Muslims are inviolable, inviolable to his fellow Muslim, his blood, his money, and his honor. The concept of the honor is an extremely important concept in Islam. It, you know, modern civilization, the human rights in modern civilization, they skip that one. They, they don't really pay much attention to this particular one. The people's honor, people's dignity. As long as you know your blood and your property are not touched, you should be fine. No, there is a little bit more to human beings uh, or to, to human rights than, than the sacredness of their blood or their lives and their property. There's something called the sacredness of their honor and their dignity. <laughs> Thank you.